Hey and welcome to Headbangers Kitchen. I'm your host Demon Stealer and today we're going to be cooking up a a gentleman's chicken with some mashed potatoes and some gravy. And why is this a gentleman's chicken? Well that's because we have Vishal J. Singh from Amog Symphony and Keshav Dhar from Sky Harbour on the show today. Also, we're doing a new format and this is going to be just a single video. Hope you guys like it. So we've got ourselves a full roasting chicken right now and this is probably about a kilo or 1.2 kilos. Uh, make sure you get it with the skin on because you know the skin cooks and releases all those lovely uh, oils of the chicken. So we're going to start by stuffing under the skin with some butter that I'm going to make right now. You take about half a stick of butter and to this I'm going to add some fresh thyme and rosemary and I'm also going to add some pepper to this. Now if you're using salted butter, you don't need to add any additional salt to this but if you're using unsalted butter or low fat butter, you might want to add a bit of salt to it as well. And make sure your butter is at room temperature so that you can mix it in easily. We're also going to add some garlic to this, some fresh garlic. So you take about two or three cloves of garlic and crush it. Now we're going to stuff our chicken under the skin with this lovely butter that we've made. So we're going to take it in two spoons and make sure there's space under the skin. So with your knife, you can separate the skin from the the meat and you need to be sure not to tear the skin you know because uh, then the butter will ooze out from there gently run your fingers under the skin so to make sure that you know it's not sticking because you want the butter to go all the way through and cook into the breast meat so we're going to take our butter now take about a spoon of that butter and just Gently put it under the skin and push it forward and then make sure you massage it in so that it reaches all the way up to the front. And we'll do that for the other side as well now. There, that's nice and done. We are also going to put some of that butter under the, the skin of the uh, thigh bone to give a little flavor to that area of the chicken as well. Because you want your chicken to be flavored evenly and you want that lovely taste throughout the chicken. So I like to do it around the area of the legs and the thighs as well because that's my favorite part of the chicken. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to take some of our uh, fresh rosemary stalks that we have and uh, just put them into the cavity of the chicken. And what I'm also going to do is put some squeezed out lime, or oh, actually these are not limes, these are limbu, because what happens is if you put it uh, without squeezing it, uh, there's a chance that the juice will cook and get very bitter. So even when you marinate the chicken, we're going to not use any of the juice because once it cooks, it starts to get bitter. However, if you have lemons available, you could definitely use the juices of the lemon to marinate the chicken as well. And we're also going to throw in some garlic into the uh, cavity of the chicken. You know, get a bit of that nice garlicky flavor as well. Now it's time to marinate the outside of the chicken, which we're going to do with some olive oil and then just season it with some salt and pepper. Now if you like your food spicy, you can always season it with a bit of paprika or some chili powder, you know, that's the Indian palate for you, spicy all the time. So I'm going to pour on the olive oil. And just sort of rub that onto the chicken. And make sure you, you season both sides of the chicken, the, you know, the top as well as the bottom. And then we're going to add the salt and pepper. Take a generous helping of salt. Make sure you season the sides as well and the back. 
and then some pepper. Now what we're going to do is take some thread and tie the legs of the chicken together. So just get yourself any regular thread and what you want to do is you want to tie these drumsticks together. I myself am just sort of learning how to do this properly. Most of the recipes you see here on Headbangers Kitchen, I sort of learn them two weeks in advance and then try and master it and you know show you how it's done. So if it doesn't look perfect, well, no problem. As long as the food tastes good, that's the most important thing. And I'm going to take the string under the wings as well, so you know, so to get extra support. So now that it's done, we're going to move it onto our baking tray. And what you want to do is you want to put the uh, wings underneath the nubbins so they don't get burnt. So now we're going to put this in our oven, in our preheated oven at about 250 degrees Celsius for about an hour and 15 minutes. And uh, this chicken is a little over a kilo, so that is about enough time. The heavier the chicken, the more time it's going to need in the oven. So let's put that in now and wait for it to get cooked. So while our chicken is roasting, we're going to make some delicious mashed potatoes. And I've got some boiled potatoes here that I've peeled. And I'm just going to cut these into smaller pieces. I microwaved that butter that we had for the chicken. So I'm just going to pour some of that lovely herb butter into this uh, mix of potatoes. So it'll have a nice herby flavor as well. And obviously because there's not enough butter in that, we're going to add a chunk of butter to that as well. And be generous with the butter. I'm also going to add some milk to this. And you could use cream alternatively if you want it to be richer and creamier. And I'm just going to season this with a little bit of pepper and some salt as well. And don't put too much salt, you can always add more salt later if you require. So now what we're going to do is we're going to microwave this for about a minute and then we're going to mash it. Time to mash! I mean mash the potatoes. Let's go mash those potatoes. Mmm, the mashed potatoes are done. And now we're going to check on our chicken and see if that's done as well. So our chicken is done now and as you can see it's a beautiful color. The skin is nice and crispy. And now we're just going to put this on the side and allow it to rest for about 10 minutes. And we're going to make our gravy now and we're going to do that by using all these lovely pan juices and the butter that is melted and just pour that into a saucepan or a frying pan to make your gravy. Make sure you get everything into that. You know, that's where all the flavor is in these lovely brown bits. And we're going to add two tablespoons of flour to this and whisk that in. And just take a whisk and let it absorb all those juices and let the flour cook as well. And you can smell all that lovely butter and the rosemary and the thyme. It's amazing. So you let this flour cook a little bit for about two, three minutes, maybe even five if you like. And we're going to add some chicken stock to this now. You can use about half a cup to a cup of chicken stock depending on how much gravy you want. If you don't have chicken stock, you can alternatively use stock cubes or maggi cubes. But I'll be really honest, I've tried them and they don't quite match up to the flavor of a real chicken stock. So you can always make a whole lot of stock and just freeze it and use it whenever you want to make some gravy like this. And you can see it's getting a lovely brown caramelized color it's also thickening up our sauce is now at the perfect consistency and it looks delicious I need to taste it though always taste your sauce and make sure it's uh, you know seasoned well mmm that's really good I'm just gonna add a little bit of lime juice to that to give it a little bit of freshness just that much and we're going to turn our gas off now and just mix that in and like I said before don't cook the lime juice because it gets bitter we're going to pour our gravy out now into our serving dish so here it is the gentleman's roast chicken with some mashed potatoes and some lovely pan gravy to go with it now while I wait for Keshav and Vishal I'm going to chop up this chicken to serve.
I've carved up the chicken now. We've got two delicious breast pieces, two leg and thigh pieces and two wings. And I did not chop too close to the breast bone because I got all this chicken meat here now that I can use and just make a sandwich or anything. And that's just delicious boneless meat of chicken. And that's pretty much ready now. We're going to plate up and as soon as Vishal and Keshav are here, we're going to get them to taste the food. Welcome back to Headbangers Kitchen and we're here today with two extraordinary gentlemen who've taken the Indian music scene by storm and also made a name for themselves globally. With collaborations with amazing musicians across the world, we have Vishal J. Singh from Amok Symphony and Keshav Dhar from Sky Harbor here today. Hey guys, uh, great to have you on the show. Thank you, my pleasure. The first thing I got to ask you both is how do you feel about the word gent? Back when people were, you know, started throwing this word around, like the word gent, and it was basically used to describe a certain sound that you get when you play a power chord, like when you, when you play a palm mute, that's effectively all it is. And going by that definition, even Black Sabbath is a gent band. But like basically it's, you know, you take a, a power chord and you mute it, and you just mute it in a certain way that instead of using your root and your fifth, you use root fifth, root fifth. You got four strings and it goes jank, jank, jank. That's the start and end of the word jank. But somehow it has now come to mean odd times. Somehow it's now come to mean polyrhythms. It's come to mean when you tune your guitar low. It's got, it's somehow, it's, it's just taken on all sorts of meanings. And now the latest meaning is that it's an entirely new genre of music. Which I find really laughable, but I mean, there you go. That, that's my interpretation of what the word means. But how does it feel, you know, being, you are obviously put in that category by people, you're, you know, uh, yeah. on godgent.com, you guys are listed there, so how does it feel being put in that category and being called a gent band? In my vision, I think the gent part comes, like, uh, I, I, I'm not really into gent because I, I don't know how to gent, to be very honest. So what I figured out is, it's just uh, getting a set of new strings and uh, drop it to drop B or something or down Q and uh, put some uh, distortion with, with a little lower gain and you get that chunky tone in the uh, in the F or I mean in the lower uh, string, uh, sixth string. So that tone itself sounds a little you know uh, interesting. So you don't have to play much. You just have to you know, pick and you know, it gives it that chomp to chomp to chomp to chomp to that that tone so that tone itself sounds good, so people are attached to that tone, so they think it's jam. So even if you compose anything which is not jam, but because you're using the same idea, it automatically sounds like jam. So the fans are, the modern fans are thinking, okay, this is jam. Yeah, Keshav, you don't seem to be very happy to be considered in the uh, jam category. No, not really. It's, uh, I, I don't really have much of an opinion on it. I mean, at first, obviously, it's like, oh, you're being pigeonholed into this, into this new whatever. But I think it's okay as long as you just do your thing, and as long as you're you're being honest about the music that you're putting out. I don't think you have anything to worry about because people who are actually trend hopping, you know, those bands don't really last very long. Like you saw the tons of new metal bands that start copying Limp Bizkit and all of them like fizzled out. Exactly. But you know, your bands like Limp Bizkit and Deftones and stuff are still like killing it today because you know they just whatever they were doing, they were just doing their own thing. They weren't going out there with the intent that, okay, we're making a new metal album. Okay, you both have been uh, extremely successful, not just in India, but you know, globally as well. Uh, and you've had some amazing collaborations. Uh, Keshav, you've collaborated with Marty Friedman from Megadeth and uh, Daniel Tompkins from Tesseract. How did this come about and, and how does it feel, you know, uh, being a musician here and just to even get a mail from Mar someone like Marty Friedman saying, I want to work with you? Well, uh I mean, it's, it's, it's weird because the first time you get an email like that saying, Hi Keshav, this is Marty Friedman here and I like your stuff. It's not like, wow. It's like, who is this guy, you know, trying to fuck with me? <laughs> you know, someone, you know, someone's taking my case, someone's playing a prank. But 
I mean, not not to be serious. It's 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 awesome, and uh, I mean, I obviously did feel that I was being taken for a ride, but like I, it was very simple. Like I was like, thanks, and then he's like, okay, okay, great, you know, and would you be interested in collaborating? So it was not never a question of I never approached either of them. They sent me the the emails first. I mean, obviously, how would I know how to contact Marty Friedman? You know. I wouldn't have his email address lying around, so I just got an email from him, and uh, he was like, "I want to collaborate." So I was like, "Yeah, sure, okay, you know, whatever. I'll play for the album, but you play on mine as well." So I sent him a track, and like within a matter of hours, he's given he gives me like six different solos. Easy, you can take your pick. You know, do what you want. You can cut them up, edit, whatever. So I was like, "Okay, you know, so we're talking about the real Marty Friedman here." <laughs> and that also means you're going to be playing later on a Marty Friedman album. Uh, actually, yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not sure if uh, I'm supposed to talk about this right now, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. I've played. I've actually done most of the arrangements and played all the rhythm guitars on about seven to eight songs out of two, out of. I don't know how many he's gonna use. How many he's gonna put on the final list, or how many he's even gonna use out of the ones that I've sent him. He, I don't. I don't have the track list with me, but I do know that I played and arranged about seven or eight songs. Wow. But yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a very surreal feeling. With with Dan again, it was the same thing. He just sent me an email over MySpace one day, saying that uh, he likes some of my stuff and that he, you know, if you know, do, did I have any plans for a vocalist and if there was space, could he do a guest spot? So yeah, you know, then he said he would like to do a track. So then, then they came down to India a couple of months later, and then we spoke, and then he was like, okay, you know, just send it to me whenever, and I'll get and I'll get done with. It. So I sent him one, and I sent him like two other songs. Just you know, you might want to check these out as well. Yeah. Ne never expecting that he would actually do anything, but he was like, "Okay, these are great. You know, I want to sing on these as well." Oh wow! So yeah, so so then he he's ended up collaborating on three songs. Of course, Vishal, you as well have uh, you know collaborated with many international musicians. In fact, you seem to be collaborating with so many musicians that I <laughs> I can't keep a track of it. You know, so uh, how do most of these come about? You know, uh, the first uh, collaboration as in uh, Jim Jim Richmond. Jim used to play for this band called Modulus, and uh, they were quite uh, popular, uh, you know, during 2000, 2002, 2003. I used to listen to them. I downloaded the EP as well. I used to listen to, uh, and I was a huge fan of his drumming. I mean, he was one of those few drummers with uh, death metal plus jazz fusion. I mean, my kind of drum. So I started, you know, he added me on MySpace, my box and getting my page and say that uh, I love Indian music. Like El Subramani is my favorite Indian musician and good to see it progressing in that metal band of India. Uh, he added me on that and we started talking, talking and at that point of time we were just like a sharing emails and all. But when I released uh, my first full length album, Abolishing Your System, uh, he he dropped me a mail like uh, after three after two months of release. He dropped me a mail and he asked me if you have any tracks to put some drums. Let me know. So I said, okay, let's try. I just recorded one small riff, and uh, that riff was like only two riffs for them. It was quite small. I just to start with, I sent it. Him, uh, I sent the riff to his email and something which they file. And uh, after two days, he said, just check this out, if it's fine. I just use my rule and kit for the time being. I'll use my re-record with a, a, a caustic kit. I heard it and I was like, my god, <laughs> <laughs> is it really possible? <laughs> he was like, the drums were so incredibly amazing. And th those parts that he did, it's like totally insane. I mean, two rides and two high hats and it was his playing style is totally different it sounds like he got four hands and four legs he's not like you yeah, know what yeah, he sounds like, sound like, like that so Ridiculous i was like my god what the hell is this so i dropped him an email next with the very next day would you like to be a part of the second album he said i don't know i can try okay so till then like i was not sure if he's going to do it and on the same track i extended it Added some more riffs. I sent uh, the guitar file with the click track to him, and he sent again. He sent me the whole drum file again, more second shot. Mm -hmm. so I said, "Okay, this is confirmed that you were in. 
let's do rock and roll. So are we ever going to see the two of you do any collaborations in the near future? Oh, we're, we're, we're already ahead of you, man. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, we've already, we've, we've done quite a bit of uh, collaborative work already. Yeah. Although this is the first time that we're actually meeting each other. But, so. uh, Headbangers Kitchen brings you two together for the first right. time. Yes. But uh, yeah, talk about it, right? Yeah, yeah. he also did guitar, uh, guest solo and uh, Soul Cycle. And Soul Cycle, which is again the project that he's and, talking about. Uh, and that track, me and, and fans are going to hear me and Keshav together in the track. Oh, right? Yeah, like, actually, like playing solo at the same time, like sort of like almost like a trade off kind yeah. of thing. Wow, that's going to be interesting. Good. Yeah, I mean, I don't really play solos much. Like, I, ha I have played absolutely no solos in my own stuff, but like, this is a challenge. The solo is incredible. It was definitely you a lot of so yeah, and uh, we're also uh, going to be working on a scoring yeah, for I mean, a movie together, which is going to be just incredible. I can't wait to get started. Uh, we're just uh, uh, about to start. I mean, it's still on the production. Uh, Keshav and me, uh, we two are going to do the background music score, and everything, anything amazing. It should be ridiculous. So, awesome. Awesome. So it's going to be quite challenging because the movie is it's a silent movie. That means the background score is going to give an image. The whole environment. Yeah, there's no. It's just the voice. acting, the actors, the direction, and the background score. So, of course, this is going to be very challenging, challenging for both of us. Because this is whatever we are going to do is something that we both never tried before. I think so. That will be fun. That will be really good fun. And what do you guys do? I mean, are you guys both doing music full time, or do you guys have some kind of a day job? Music is my day job. I'm actually here in Bombay to produce uh, Providence and doing, uh, I do jingles, I, I, you know, I make music for ads, stuff like that. Okay. And Vishal, I believe you also do something similar? Yeah, yeah same. But I'm not very much active in the ads business anymore. Uh, I've been into commercials and ads from 2008 to 2011, January. Because uh, I'm, I was like, I just wanted to. You know, okay. It's like it's like change in the direction because it's it became too monotonous. And to be very frank, at this sometimes it's like a chocolate industry. You just make a chocolate product, let's go. Don't think about it. So yeah, that is one thing. And I really want to get into the producing bands and especially wanted to help the bands in the arrangement of songs. How the songs need to be arranged. I mean, I'm not going to involve in the composition part. Okay. But for example, this riff can come here. And yeah. Instead of playing two times, you can play three, and you can do something in the back. These are the ideas that normally bands at first stage they don't understand. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to help them out with that thing. Also. And when can we expect the new Amok Symphony album? Or is there going to be one? Uh, there won't be any album, but we are producing a DVD this time, and it's going to have three sets. One will explain the making of abolishing this popular system, all the playthrough videos, the composition of riffs, how it programmed, like we came up with the parts, uh, the making of the quantum hack code, the concept, uh, and the third is going to be a biography and my daily life as a, as a composer, producer, the bands I've produced, the biography of Jim. Yep, you know, that's that's going to be really interesting, yeah? So Amok Symphony is going live? Yes, we are planning to do live in 2011. And of course we need lots of videos. Of Either way, Jim is coming with that or I'm going to the United States. Everything is in the plan now. Cool, and uh, speaking of that, Keshav, uh, when is Sky Harbor going to be released? And uh, you know, are you guys also going to go live the way Amok Symphony is finally going live? As for the release, uh, I I don't know. Well, see, if it were a solo album, it would have been out months ago. The fact is that it's now become pretty much a collaboration album. There's tons of collaborations as we've just spoken about. So, as and when the guys find time to send in their parts, it'll be done. As for live, uh, like when the time is right, I guess it will happen sooner or later. But like, I I mean, I, I don't want. I'm not saying anything else. But you are hoping to go live someday. Eventually, yeah. But I I'm not like putting any unrealistic expectations. Awesome. So I think we're about done and I think it's time to get to the food now. You guys must be really hungry. Yes. Right. Have you eaten at all today? No. no, no. Alright, so let's go and get that chicken and feed these two gentlemen here. I have cooked up a gentleman's roast chicken for you with mashed potatoes and gravy. So dig in. That's right. Yes. On the count of one, two, jijan, jijan. Yes. <laughs> Do I 
you kidding me? This is insane. Yeah? Yeah. This is insane. It's amazing. It's incredible. Amazing. Mm. I'm dripping on it, dude. This is crazy. Wow. Madness. So, so both are gentlemen. And I mean gentlemen approve of the chicken and it's good. Yeah guys? Wow. So we'll see you Man. next Amazing time. Impressive. Melodic symphonic dark man. Just fine. <laughs> exactly. That's what Naja wanted. There we are. Both are gentlemen approve of the chicken and it's good. That's right. Awesome. awesome. So we'll see you on the next episode. Cheers and stay the home. Oh, I still jump in. Uh oh, I have a beer one.